for their, um, their own selves. So in their religion, it was understood that if person A understands the Bible in one a way, and person B understands the Bible in the other way, that is exactly what Protestantism was about. It's like if I say today, oh, you read the Quran, you understand it your way, and you read the Quran and you understand it your way, and there's no authoritative uh, measure to say who's right or wrong. Everyone's right in their own way. And because there was no more unity when there was no more what? Catholicism. Okay? So, somewhat, this is what happened. But it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm giving liberal statements here. There, there, there is more specifics, though. But as a result of the Reformation, which was essentially the Reformation in the Protestant movement, the pro just as Jews helped Muslims come into Spain, the Jewish people also helped, like for example Calvin, if you study Martin Luther and then Calvin and the influence Calvin had from the Jewish people, because in the Muslim universities, a lot of the professors were what? A lot of the professors were Jews. And when it comes to knowledge, Jews have always been on top throughout history. This is why, um, uh, I forget, the Jewish uh, scholar, um, uh, he wrote, our, our golden age of the Jews was Muslim Spain. Because they were, they were when, because also this happens naturally in history, when the Jews allowed Muslims in Spain, they were more, uh, you can say, they had prestige. Right? Because they, they let the victory army coming in and they're the ones who paved the way for Muslims into Spain. So the Jews were treated very well in, uh, in Spain. So, but uh, Calvin, for example, had a big effect upon Protestantism, okay? which broke religion as it was. And it led, and this breaking of Catholicism, uh, Protestants, from the main religion of that time, which was Catholics, this break and what became Protestantism is called what? Reformation. Okay. And therefore, for the next few hundred years, all the thinkers that came, starting with who? Descartes, first philosopher, the last philosopher being Nietzsche. For that David Hume, so on and so forth, Pascal, all these. All of these philosophers that came were coming with a certain background of history, right? The world hasn't become globalized yet. They're coming from a Western uh, history perspective, and all of them are reacting to what? Their historical background. And so what did they want to do? What did they want to do? They needed to come up with a system of running the world that had nothing to do with God. Why? I thought Descartes believed that they, they did. And so, but as you, you start with Descartes who says, well, yeah, there's a God, but the world runs as a machine, and you know, basically God's not really involved, to David Hume who says, well, if there's a God, what does it matter to us? Which I'll come to in a second, right? So secularism? Well, we're coming towards that. It's, it's, it's not really there yet, but what I'm trying to say right now, the point I'm trying to make right now is Protestants and Catholics divided and then a bunch of philosophers come. What is these philosophers, what period do they belong to? What period, what period do these philosophers belong to? This is what you just said. The what? The Renaissance. Okay? Just going to write R, Renaissance. In the Muslim world, we need an Islamic Renaissance, intellectually speaking. Okay, and we can talk about that a little bit later. But you had the world. you needed a Renaissance. Renaissance means a new revival. Okay, there was a new revival. And what did the Renaissance do? What did the Renaissance do? The Renaissance had to create a new world that did not. The old world, what was it? The king and the pope. pope. Like religion and state had to go hand in hand. That was the concept. Now everything they had to come up with had to do away with what? Which side? 
had to do away with God. Because all of all of their past his recent meaning recent means nine, eight hundred years uh, of history has been a reaction to the has been a reaction to the king and the Catholic and uh, the Pope model. Okay? And so you have uh, the first thinker from Descartes to David Hume, all of these people are thinking, how can they get rid of God? How can they get rid of God? And what do I mean by that? Is that even in, op so over here was one extreme, right? One extreme was, oh, we're just going to make zodiac signs up and just have occult signs. Over here you had observation, but you had observation when you're looking at the sun, you're looking at the sun, you're looking at the world of observation, but still Allah is involved. Allah made the sun. But they took that idea, that idea and took it to the next extreme, which was just worry about what you're looking at, devoid of God, right? In the same way you had, for example, women, they were animals, and then Islam gave them a middle position, so to say, and then the extreme came, no, 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 make them equal to men. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? Everything that is considered enlightenment, which will come after the Renaissance, is all about taking the middle stance of Islam and taking it to the other extreme, which from the extreme that it was before. And then it's considered that is the enlightenment. Now that is the, the progressive way of thinking. That's the enlightened way of thinking is. So over here you have the dark ages. Over here you have the world of science. But Allah is still involved. Allah is the one who created this. So yes, we want to study this for what it is. And to appreciate Allah. And to appreciate Allah's creation. But over here then it goes to the other extreme of saying. But. And also looking at their history. Right? With the Pope. And doing away with religion. Throwing away religion. So over here it was, yes, we'll do observation, but no, not with what in mind? Huh? Not with religion, not with ayatullah, not with Allah in mind. So from there, science became blind to what? Everything was studying science for the, or observation of things, but without the concept of God, right? So it went from one extreme to the other extreme. Okay, uh, now, so what did these people do? Let's go back a little bit. What did these people do? How many minutes do I have in there? Oh, you don't know? Okay. So I'll just keep talking until it dies. Okay, so all of you are following me, right? So far, everybody's yes. following me, yes? Nimra? No. No? You're not listening. <coughs> so, all of these people that came, they tried to create a world in which that had nothing to do with Allah. It's almost like, I know this world exists. I know this world exists. But I don't know if hereafter exists or not. I don't know if hereafter exists. But this world does exist, so I'm just going to deal with this world. Because they started to have doubts with, if the origin of something is wrong, then no matter what you change it into, Protestantism, you still have what? Doubts. Right? And then that's why you have your Lutherans and, 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 and the, Protest the Baptists, the Lutherans, the Presbyterians, and so on and so forth, all these different, like, you know, every, every church that you go on to in the street is a different denomination basically because they, they can't agree upon anything after that original divide at least within Europe right so so here it is these now philosophers they're all trying to understand the world without a law I don't know if there's a soul I don't know if there's a soul but I know I have this body let me take care of and enjoy this body as much as possible Right? So, uh, in the Dark Ages it was 
thought bad to have sex. You know, if you want to be a good person, don't have sex. Then Islam came and gave the middle way. No, 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 do marriage. Then the extreme of progress of enlightenment thinking came. Oh, we're just like animals. You can have sex anywhere. Why do you have to be stuck with one girl? Or, uh, you know, why do you have to be stuck with one person all your life? That's stupid. Right? So everything went from one extreme to the other extreme. And the middle way which Islam gave has been as a process of being history is being erased or being removed. So these philosophers from Descartes to David Hume, they came and they tried to con think of the world in a way that they didn't have to deal with Allah. They can explain the world without Allah, without Islamic ethics or without ethics. And, and then of course you have, after that you have the main, uh, you know, the, the, you can say classical uh, period uh, type you have Darwin who then says oh we are from animals lo and behold right we are actually from animals we are actually from monkeys so that proves what we're trying to do and since we are from animals then we can behave like animals we don't have to be married we can have other ways of living and uh, that is not to say if what Darwin said was right or wrong I'm not talking about that because uh, uh, that is also another issue which we can deal with. Um, but I just wanted you to understand. So, so enlightenment was about what? Another, another thing. Uh, over here, you have one type of monetary oppression. One type of monetary oppression where you have people in slavery, right? And then you have Islam saying, take away slavery. Uh, deal with people justly. And then you have... Uh, you know, we should have a free market, an open market, let's deal with people, let's have free market, let's have free trade. And the other extreme of that is what? Capitalism. Who owns the rights, not the late, what's the opposite of capital? Who's the opposite of capital? One person, capital means what? Money. Right? We live in a capitalistic society, Do you have money, Money making money, which is what? Riba, interest, right? And who is the op what is the opposite of ca capitalism? What is the opposite of the investor? One person puts the money in, the other person does what? The labor work, right? So you have the capitalist and you have the labor, wor labor worker. And over here, you have the extreme of from one type of oppression in the middle Islam saying, yes, have open markets, but do not have what? Interest. Don't have a situation of gambling. Don't have a situation of where money makes money like interest. But have an open market. Here it's have an open market and be a capitalist. Give the money to somebody else to be the labor worker and put interest upon them, interest upon them, interest upon them. So they're always just paying their interest and they become slaves. From physical slavery to monetary slavery and the middle way of Islam was left. But this new way of thinking, oh, we don't need families. Oh, we should have capitalism. We should have uh, democracy without any bounds. There's, even if everybody, if everyone says, let's have slavery, we'll have slavery. If everyone says, let's not have slavery, we won't have slavery. But Islam wanted democracy, but within what? Certain, over here is there's no, no freedom. Dark Ages, no freedom. Over here you have freedom, but you have also rules. Over here you have, oh, let's have freedom and have no rules. So, I have a body. I don't know if where my soul is. I don't see any soul, so why should I care about my soul? I don't know if there's any day of judgment. I'm here in this world, so I might as well enjoy this. I don't have to care about saving my soul. I don't even see it. God? I don't know where God is, but this world is here. I'm, let me enjoy. So it went from uh, one extreme to the next extreme. And this uh, process of from the Dark Ages to Islamic period to the reformation that took place in, the, in, 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 in Europe 
to the process of enlightenment. And after enlightenment, we have progressive, you can say, and from the enlightenment starts, you know, quote unquote, the modern world. And the European way of thinking, the, this European history of, look, we've come away from God. We've come away from God. And we've been able to be so progressive without God. And all of you all in the Muslim world, you're so behind because you're still with God. You're still in the backward times. You're still thinking about God. And we left that. Historically, we left that. We don't have God in our politics like there used to be when the Pope and the, and the uh, King was there. We left. God should be in the mosque, should be in the churches, should be in the synagogues. But don't bring God into politics. Don't bring ethics and, 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 and economics together. Don't bring God into the economy. Don't bring God into politics. Don't bring God into law, into public law. And so this is what's basically happened. And now what do you find? Now you find that because of this extreme, just as when there was this extreme, what was there? Anarchy, a breakdown of society, right? Downfall of society. Now you're going to the other extreme and you're finding what? You're finding now same thing, or is beginning to happen. Now it's beginning to show its fruits more and more and more. Look at how many uh, you know, uh, children without fathers there are in this country, right? One woman gets raped every two minutes. I mean, who? I mean, you talk of, see, on the one side, you have these slogans of freedom and, and, and we're going to do this and that. And the other hand, uh, a female gets raped every two minutes. There's such a big difference between the high slogans and uh, reality. And uh, so this is where we are. So, and how, this is the real question now. How does... A Muslim get affected by all of this.